Good morning, Kahel Kadosh, Beruchim Abayim to everybody. Today, Thursday, the seventh day of Menachem Ab, corresponding to the 4th of August 2022. Today's class graciously sponsored by Boris Mushayev and family for the Refua Shelema of his father, Mordechai Ben Sheva, among the Holim of all of Am Israel. Amen. Additionally, today's class graciously sponsored by the Sultan family, Le'elu Nishmat, their beloved grandfather, Ezra ben Nehama alava shalom. Additionally, by Eli and Sarah Levy, Le'elu Nishmat, her beloved grandfather, Zishe ben Eliezer Weintrup. Additionally, today's class dedicated, Le'elu Nishmat, Mrs. Lili Safra, Le'a, Badoba Kohen, Vehana alava shalom. Additionally, today's class is dedicated, Le'elu Nishmat, a dear friend of mine, uh, Haim Meir Lev Ben David Meir Alava Shalom, a young man that returned his soul to the Almighty a few years back. And last but not least, my dear uncle, Herschel Kalman Ben uh, Yeheskel uh, Alava Shalom, that we all have a fun and great memories for him, a person who had a great emuna and bitahon in a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and Baruch Hashem, uh, was blessed to see great Nahad from his children and grandchildren. Then Neshamot, they will have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. As we mentioned yesterday, today, Be'ezat Hashem, we are going to concentrate in reviewing the introduction of the Benishai concerning this week's Torah portion. As we know, this Shabbat uh, marks the beginning of Sefer Devarim, the fifth and final Humash of the Torah, in which is Moshe Rabbeinu giving several uh, farewell speeches to Am Israel, giving them, reminding them in a very respectful way of not repeating the mistakes of the past. So comes the Benishai and discusses that the topic of the relationship between Yaakov and Esav. The Torah mentions this concept in the beginning of the Perasha. The Pasuk says, Atem Ovrim, now you're about to cross the boundaries or the border of the descendants of your brother Esav that is settling in the city of a place called uh, Seir. And be careful and watch out and don't start up with them because I'm not giving you yet the permission to handle that part of the land of Israel. This is the warning that Moshe Rabbeinu gives to the Jewish people. The Benishai says, what kind of warning is this? The Jewish people are on a quest to conquer the land of Israel. And now you're telling them, no, you know what? You can have A, B, C, D, but skip E, F, G. And the question is, why? The Benishai explains that this message of Moshe Rabbeinu not only is not limited to that particular time in history, that means post-mortem Moshe Rabbeinu, it took Yoshua with Am Israel 70 years to conquer the land, plus seven years to divide the land. So the Benishai explains, and this is not a new topic which I'm going to be talking in the next few minutes, because I did mention it in the past. The Benishai quotes the Moed Kol Hai, the famous Rabbi uh, Haim Palachi, Alava Shalom, that he explains that from a Kabbalistic angle, the month of the Jewish calendar have different types of managers. That's what he explains. Now, what does it mean, different types of managers? I don't think that I'm going to go through the entire Jewish calendar, but I'm going to make it very quick. It says the Benishai that Yaakov and Isaac, they came to the realization that they actually are the leaders of two opposite movements of the world. Yaakov, goodness, kindness, 
benevolence, godliness, holiness, faith in Hashem, faith in God, and I said completely the opposite. I want it, I take it. It's not mine, I steal it. You refuse to give it to me, I'll find a way to get it from you. This was Isav's mission statement. I do what I want, nobody tells me what to do, and I have no limitations of what can I do with my life in a negative way. This was Isav. Simple to understand. Comes the Benish Hai. That when Yaakov Avinu saw this, he was concerned. Not for him, but for us. The future of Am Israel. If the future of the world it will be on the madman known as Isav, I need to protect my children. I need to give my children multivitamins. So what did they do? They split the calendar, says the Benish Hai. The month of Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, goes to Yaakov. Pesach, Pesach Sheni, Shavuot. The month of Tammuz, the 17th of Tammuz, that's already a headache. The next month, Av, Tishave Av, that's a major headache. And Yaakov wanted to take also Elul. That's the deal. You took three months, Isav takes three months. Yaakov says to Isav, Rohi, excuse me, I cannot let you have the month of Elul on the, your tutelage. Why not, Isav asked. Because after Elul is my month. Tishrei, Heshvan, Kislev. Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah. I cannot come from one day to the other and say, I'm ready for Rosh Hashanah. What did you do for Rosh Hashanah? You bought a seat in the synagogue? You bought a new suit? You bought a new pair of shoes? Is that your preparation for Rosh Hashanah? I need 30 days spring training, right? That's exactly how Yaakov was able to remove a loop from the auspices of Isaac. Not today, but it's mentioned in the Torah what I just said. There is a hint in Perasha Baishlah about this dialogue and how Yaakov took the month of Elul. So comes Yaakov and has Tishrei, all the holidays. Elul is a bonus round. Heshvan, quiet. And Kislev, Hanukkah. But interesting enough, Hanukkah is the only holiday of the Jewish calendar that begins at the end of the month. Usually, the first half of the month is better than the second half of the month. Doesn't mean that the second half is not good. But in many circles, weddings only take place the first half because the moon is in a growing stage. And after the 15th, the moon diminishes. Also for Birkat Alevana. This coming Mosa'e Shabbat, etc., this coming Mosa'e Shabbat is Tisha B'Av. Technically, we should have said Birkat Alevana, but we don't say Birkat Alevana because one of the requirements of Birkat Alevana is to be happy. So we say it Mosa'e Tisha B'Av, whether allowing, when Arvid finishes, as I said yesterday, we're gonna do Havdalah again because the first Havdalah that we did Saturday night is only on fire, and the final part of the Abdallah, grape juice, and the Berachah of Hamavdil is gonna be said after Arvid. So we do Arvid, Havdalah, Birkat Alevana, breaking of the fast. That's the proper order. So Yaakov captured 
the final week of Kislev, Hanukkah, and the first few days of Tevet, which goes back under the tutelage of Isav. So Tevet, Shevat, Adar, is Isav, but then we have the miracle of Purim. So we took away Adar from Isav. Tevet, we took three days in the beginning, but in the week late, a week later we have Ta'anit of the 10th of Tevet, and then we have the month of Tu Bishvat, that we have a freebie known as Tu Bishvat. So basically, says the Benishai, how long is the management position occupied by Isab? It says, long story short, three weeks between Tammuz and Ab, and a couple of weeks between Tevet and Shabbat. The rest of the month is on the, of the months is under the auspices of uh, Yaakov Avinu. So it says, Le'atit Labo. Now it's going to start getting nicer by the minute. Will come a time in history, says the Benish Hai, that these two months also will be taken away from Esav, and they will return times for the Jewish people, yamim tovim. They will become festive days. And the Benishai then goes on a very uh, Kabbalistic uh, explanation, something to do with the actual name of Isab, would I rather uh, save it for some other time, but I'd like to go to the next paragraph. So it says the Benishai, our goal today is to take away the power of Isab, to turn these days from mourning to celebration. The Benishai says, how do we achieve that? Teshuvah uma'asim tovim. Repentance and increasing in the good actions, in the good deeds. As the Benishai explains, every month of the Jewish calendar connects to a different letter of Hashem's name. Remember the other day I mentioned marriage, I mentioned Yod, the husband, Ke, the wife, Vav, the son, He, the daughter, says the Benishai. In the Jewish calendar, we have a similar concept. We take Hashem's name, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yod. Amonai. What do we do? We take this month, this word, and we write milui. What's the meaning of milui? I split. For example, let's do an exercise together. Okay? If I need to spell the word Aleph, how do I write? Aleph, Lamed, Fe. If I need to do the Dalet, Dalet, Lamed, Tav. The Nun, Nun, Vav, Nun. And the Yod, Yod, Vav, Dalet. Okay? So, says the Benish High, if I follow the, the tracking of each month, is the Aleph, Nisan, Lamed, Iyar, Fe, Sivan, Dalet, Tammuz, Lamed, Av. If I put these two letters together, Dalet, Lamed, which are the letters connecting to Tammuz and Av. What word gives me? Dal. dal. What's the meaning of the word Dal in Hebrew? Shallow or? Eh? No. Shallow. Ooh, ooh. Poverty. Poverty. Dal. dal. Sure. You have Ani. Dal is worse than an Ani. Sure. In Spanish they say, Pobre, paupérrimo. That's the Spanish word for it. Yani, not poor, less than poor. In other words, more challenging than being poor. Impoverished. Impoverished, thank you. So it says the Benish High, there is a pasuk in the chapter of Tehillim. Listen to this pasuk. Chapter 41. Ashre maskil el dal. Fortunate is the one that thinks about the improvish, says the Benish High, 
what in Provish are you talking about? It says the Ben Ishai, the month of Tammuz and Av. Ashre Maskil, fortunate is the person that makes the Shuba and those Ma'asim Tovim in honor of the month of Tammuz and Av. Beyom Yemaletehu Hashem. In the day of hardship, God will extol on him extra protection. As the Ben Ishai, which are the other months of hardship? Tevet and Shevat. That's why if you split the month, one column, Nisan, Yar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Tishrei, Hejban, Kislev, Tevet, Shevat, Adar, Tammuz is the partner of Tevet, and Av is the partner of Shevat. So it says the Ben Ishai, the Borei Olam will give extra protection to the person to bring Beracha and Aslaha in all their endeavors. Comes the Benish Hai, I'm skipping because the next paragraph, I need probably a PowerPoint presentation to truly understand, but the Benish Hai says that if you combine the letters that connect to the month of Tammuz, Av, Tevet, Shevat, you're gonna have the word Daliyav. Okay, Izal Maim Midoliyav. It says, Great Shefa comes in the power of the four months combined. Comes the Benish Hai and it says, Will come a time that the Tapehu Le Yamim Elu Shel Toba. These days of hardship will be reversed for goodness. Why? Because all the hardship and all the pain and suffering and the destruction of the Beta Mikdash, it was caused from the foundation of one single problem. What was the problem? The Avon of Adam and Hava. Aetz Haddad. Obviously, we are responsible. It's not fair to, pay, to, to place the blame on its entirety on Adam and Hava. Okay, they did something wrong, and we are dealing with it. But we also can do something good about it. So it says the Benishai that these months will turn into good months. And it says, where do we learn such a concept? Again, I'm skipping some Kabbalistic concepts, not suitable at this moment. And it says, the month of Av will become the father of all of the months of the Jewish calendar. Because since so many tra tragedies, which is actually something that happened yesterday, Uh, yesterday was the 3rd of uh, August and based on history that's when the Jewish communities in Spain were given the announcement of the exile that they were obligated to leave the country yesterday was the day and eventually brought the Inquisition because they gave you three options other you leave, other we kill you, or you convert to Christianity. Those were the three options. And when it meant leaving, it didn't mean, okay, let me put my property for sale, <laughs> nothing. You left empty handed. Literally, you escaped as a refugee. You saw Ukraine, what happened? They better off the Ukraine time than the Spain 1492. Much better. Why? Because at least there were areas of the world that became aware of what's going on. And many countries uh, are watching. And the Jewish people, Baruch Hashem, worldwide, gave a tremendous amount of uh, financial help to facilitate all this absorption of refugees, wherever they are landing. Most of them, by the way, are never going back because nothing waits for them there. They're not even sure if the house or the apartment that they live is alive still. If you look at the pictures, the, the, the explosion and the attacks, it's basically a one-way ticket. And Russia is not far from it. Even though things in Russia are, thank God, a bit calmer for the Jewish community, but based on those who live there, it's not so simple what's going on overall so, you know, but in Spain, 
Who was watching? No one was watching. There was nothing to watch. There was no itorah.com. There was no Zoom. There was nothing, no social media, no, no posting of videos, nothing to see what's going on in Spain. So yesterday was the day when Don Isaac Abrabanel and another great community leader, eh, Aharon Senor, maybe, eh, were informed by the king and queen that the days are counted. And even though they attempted to pay a heftier tax to the kingdom, it was rejected by the church and eventually became the sealing and the signing of the Inquisition of the edict against the Jewish people in Spain. It was signed on the day of Tisha Ab. But it has been brewing already since yesterday, historically speaking. Fast forward 500 and years and change, Spain wants to do Teshuvah. And that's why they suddenly open doors to have people apply for the Spanish passport, if you are able to show Sephardic traces, whatever. Obviously, that doesn't uh, 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 cover up for the, the murders of thousands of Yehudim 500 years ago, which we know the rest of the story. So comes the Benish Hai and it says, the fact that this month of Av is so dark in the history of the Jewish people it means that it has the potential of reversing an aridio de la shon. Muhrach, it is mandatory. merubot yoter mikola hodashim. It will come a time that the month of Ab will be the best month, as the Benishai quotes David Amelech, Samehenu Kimot Einitano, chapter 90 of Tehillim. Bring us joy to us like the days of our suffering. That means that if suffering is the main name of the month of Ab, it means that salvation must be according to the level of the suffering of Am Israel throughout history. And that's why it says the Benish Hai Lashon, what we learn in Rosh Chodesh based on Sefer Yetzirah. Shifto Issachar. Remember in the earlier part of the week, I explained that one of the month of one of the Sadikim connected to this month is the Shevet of Issachar. And we gave a whole explanation. Listen to Sunday or Monday class via iTorah.com. And it says the Benishai. But let's be honest. From the month of Av. How many days are in the month of Av? 30 days. 30 days. Already in the 15th of Av, we have to be Av. That's the reversal. Moment of happiness, the happiest and the holiest day of the year next to Yom Kippur. So when is the real dramatic moment of Tisha Av? Av? Rosh Chodesh till the 9th of Av. That's nine days. That's it, nine days. The fact that this year we postponed the Ta'anit, that's because of Shabbat. That's why we do the fasting on Sunday. Only Kippur is done on Shabbat. But on a regular year that Tisha Av is on the 9th of Av, as the Benishai, how many hours these days actually represent. I said this in Rosh Chodesh, I think. How many hours? Nine times 24, the number we know, 216. 216. The same numerical value as the word Gevura and Arie, good. Arie means a lion. That's why the zodiac sign of this month is Leo. Yehuda. The, the liar represents Yehuda, but Yehuda is not connected to the month of Ab. But thank you, Mazal Arye. And then he says, but, but, the Gemara writes that Mashiach was born, or the essence of Mashiach was born, has the Beta Mikdash is being destroyed. 
In other words, if there is a problem, the Gemara writes, Akadosh Baruch Hu Magdim Refua Lamaka. In other words, God provides a solution prior to the problem. If there is a problem, it's because there is a solution most of the time. So therefore, it says the Benishai, he was born in the afternoon of Tisha Ab. So how many hours do I allocate if the daytime has 12 hours and the Beta Mikdash began on the third hour or the third segment of the day? So more or less, if the Ta'anit, let's say, if sunset is at 8, at what time is the third 4 o'clock? Because they have 4 hours, 4 hours, 4 hours. So says the Benish High, if that's the case, from the 216 hours, I deduct 4 hours. How many hours it gives me? 212. That's New York City area code, right? 212. 212. Also, for cashiering purposes, 212 is higher than 180. 212 is the, the temperature level of Fahrenheit that the water evaporizes. It's 100 centigrade, 212 Fahrenheit. That's why you see many times in many kosher products, there is a sign that says, kasherize at 212 because of this discrepancy in the halakha. Boiling point or steaming point? Just a free note on this. So it says the Benish high. Now we need to use more numbers. So if I have the war, the number 212, how do we write the number 212 in Hebrew? The 200 is Resh, right? And the 12 is Yod Bet. So what word do I make from Resh Yod Bet? Bet. No, no, Rav. 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 What's the difference between Rav and Rav? And don't speak about barbecue ribs. That's for Sunday night or Monday or Shabbat. All right? What's the meaning of the word Rav? Rav with Vav means majority. Rav with Yod means what? Fight. Fighting. Hazaku Baruch. Fighting. So it says the Benish Hai, 212 hours of fighting. Now the question is, what fighting are we talking about? No. No. That's the, the, the straw that brought the camels back. Sinat Hinam doesn't reach an immediate level. It builds up. But I'm going to give you the answer. Listen to the words. And I'm going to say exactly what it says. Because this is a universal message worldwide. It says the Benish Hai, Shebizu Talmide Hachamim. You know what's the meaning of those three words? They mistreated the rabbis. What does it mean, mistreated the rabbis? The rabbis are telling Am Israel in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, Rabotai, we are in Yerushalayim. We live in the Beit HaMikdash. We have the Kohen Gadol. We have the Korbanot. How can you act in this way? How can you hate your brother? How can you commit adultery? How can you get inclined to, to an idol? What was the reaction of people? Don't tell me what to do. If you tell me one more time, you'll see what's going to happen to you. By the way, you heard of someone named Irmiya Hanavi, Jeremiah, the one who wrote Megillat Echa. You know that there was a price tag on his head by the Jewish people. They couldn't stand him because he's a Navi, a prophet. What's the mission of the prophet? He's not going to give you the Powerball numbers. <laughs> what do you think the prophet is going to do to you? He's going to deliver a godly message. And that's why if you look at the Haftarot that we read between the 17th of Tammuz 
And this Shabbat, they are very powerful, scary haftarot, telling us, guys, wake up and smell the coffee. You can't be the way you are. And the Gemara says, Lo hareva Yerushalayim elaat shebizu ba talmidei hachamim. God says, I'm able to deal with every one of your transgressions. But if you touch my appointed one, you starting with me. This is a pasuk that you say, and I say, every day of your life in the prayers, al al tareu. Don't blame or criticize the rabbis. And don't belittle the prophets. That says, because once you reach that level, you cross all boundaries. Many times people have this derogatory statement about the rabbis. What humbra of the day? The Gemara says, you know what it means criticizing rabbis? When you say two words, Han Herabbanan, these rabbis, that's all you said. You didn't say more than that. You didn't say more than that. Many times people, due to their lack of knowledge or ignorance, I'm sorry to use this word, uh, they believe that rabbis wake up one day and they want to do a new halacha. They want to do a new humbra. There is no such a thing. No rabbi can invent halachot. No rabbi can invent halachot. Rabbis teach halachot, review halachot. How many times I hear? How come I never heard of such a thing? When was this invented? It was never invented. It's written in the Torah. Now that you're learning more Torah, then you're becoming aware that you didn't know nothing for the past 50 years of your life. So hurry up and catch up the train before the, the, the train is going to leave you. So it says that when the hachamim will go around and tell the people, become better, be more proper, respect your friend, respect your spouse, have a bit of derecheres, be a mensch, as they say, People had an attitude. God says, I sent you the prophet, you are threatening him. You ignore me by doing idolatry. You hurt your fellow men by committing adultery. You go and you act in ways which are beyond description. And on top of that, my representatives, you mistreat them, I need to start execution. But God's love is so great at Monk for the Jewish people that what did God do? Didn't activate it, physical execution, God forbid, but release his anger or wrath, rather, to whom? To the building. The destruction of the Beta Mikdash. That's why there is a chapter of Tehillim. Chapter 79, I believe. Mizmor le David, no, Mizmor le Asaf. Elokim ba'u go'im benahalatecha. The Gemara discusses this chapter of Tehillim. A song, listen to the words, by Asaf. God, the nations came to invade your holy place, the Bet HaMikdash. What was the first line of action on the conquering of the Beta Mikdash, on the destruction of the Beta Mikdash? Place a pig in the altar. Put an idol in the in the Kodesh Kodashim, defiling, defiling the holy place. Now, as the Gemara, how can you sing for the destruction? Mizmor, you sing? Kina, a lamentation prayer should have been written. Says the Gemara, you know why we sing? 
because the only destruction was limited to the physical building that can be rebuilt. But the essence and the spirit of the Jewish people remains alive, non-stop, from the time of Abraham Avinu till today. And we are this generation. The past is gone. The future never happened. So the only thing we have is what's with us in our generation. And the Gemara writes, May ahar shebizu and the Mahila, for those who learn Gemara, there are two titles given to the Hachamim. One is called Rav, and one is called Rabbi. What's the difference? One has a Yod, one doesn't have a Yod. Bottom line, rule is, if the Talmud says Rabbi with a Yod, that means that he originates from Israel. If the Gemara says, Rav Papa, Rav Nehman, for example, Rav without Yod from Babel. That's a basic difference. Yerushalayim, Yod, the Yod. Babel, no Yod. So therefore it says, Umeahar Shebizu et Rabbane Eres Israel, Laku, Riv Sha'ot. Midag keneged midag, God says. You mistreating the rabbis? What's the numerical value of the word rabbi? Resh bet yod, 212, 212 hours of hardship. He said, like you want to give me a gift, okay? And you ask me, rabbi, give me your gematria of your name. Okay, my name is Yosef. Okay? Yosef is six times 26. Do the number, 78 plus 78, 156. That's the numerical value of my name, 156. Six times Hashem's name, six times the word jealousy. Those named Yosef, they need extra protection for jealousy because the Yosef had jealous from the brothers to him. That's a side note. But I'm not going to I'm not going to settle you for you to give me a gift of 156. I'm going to give you the Kabbalistic number of my name. So the Yod is Yod Vav Dalet. The Samech Samach Mem Chav. The Fe Fe He. So that's 85 plus 120 plus uh, 20. Okay, at least I'm close to $300. Okay, but that's also, I don't give me a, a gift, please. Okay, no gifts. But I'm telling you, God says, you mistreated Rabbi, numerical value 212, you deal with 212 hours of difficulties. And it's true. That's what we are going through now. You got to scramble what I'm going to eat today, what I'm going to eat tomorrow, Okay, Shabbat, we have a break. And then I got to prepare for the Ta'anit. I got to prepare garments for Sunday. I got to find my Yom Kippur shoes. I can't take a bath on Saturday night or Sunday, obviously. And I got to do restrictions on my day-to-day -day life. But it says the Benish Hai, and we're going to finish now with a fantastic Hiddush. It says the Benish Hai, Megillat Esther, Megillat Esther, the Pasuk says, La Yehudim Hayeta Ora. Ora, numerical value 212. Aleph Vav 7, Resh 200, He 7, 5 rather, 2, 200 plus 7 plus 5, 212. So it says the Benish Hai, Shie Mispar Ora. Beit Kayem Banu Pasuk. La Yehudim Ayeta Ora Besimha Besason Pikar. It says the Benish Hai, if 212 hours were so detrimental, they must turn from darkness to light. So we hope and pray, Be'ezat Hashem. And I, the truth is that there is more what to say. For example, the Benish Hai writes based on Kabbalah. The month of Tammuz and Ab 
are connected to the eyes of the person. That's what's written in the Kabbalah. And he says it very clearly, and it says, Shehem Behinat Ainaim. Okay? So it says, the Ain. What's the Ain? The, the Ain means what? Eye. How are Hachamim are called in the Torah? Aine Ha'ida. The eyes of the Jewish world. When we have questions, when the world has questions, who do we turn? Hachamim. Each question on the level. Some questions needs to go to the chief rabbi. Some questions can be handled locally. Some questions to an expert. The Torah calls them in Megillat Echa. I don't think it's in this Sefer. Can you bring me, a, por favor, a art scroll? Homash Devarim or art scroll? Yeah, it's easier because I know that it's there. Yeah, Homash art scroll. English, please. I have a small question. The half of the first half of the month is the good half, and the second half of the month is not so good. Why is Shabbat was not done, was done in the second half? Excellent. Excellent. Let me clarify first of all, when I said before the first half of the month and the second half of the month, it's based on the, the moon. The moon grows up to the 15th and then starts decreasing. Doesn't mean that you cannot get married on the second half of the month. Doesn't mean that you cannot move on the second half of the month. You can do a lot of things, but the a power is to get rid of the tragedy as soon as we can. Can you imagine postponing a lot of things more than the first half of the month? It happened because chronologically that day is already, thank you, is already troublemaker. As I said the other day, starting from Yaakov and Isaac, then move, thank you so much, then moving on to the story of the Meragelim, etc. So that's why a lot of things concentrate on that. But I'd like to read a very short, tiny paragraph from the Megillah Echa, right here. Almost there. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. I'm just going through the Aftarot very quickly. Rosh Hashanah, okay, Kippur, Sukkot, the pages are so thin. Okay, I found it. So let's go before Megillah Trut, Shira Shirim. Fenak, Megillat Esther, I'm sorry, gentlemen, Shira Shirim, Ruth, ah, before Kohelet, okay, I have it, I have it, I have it, thank you. Chapter 3 of Megillat Echa. The way it's written explains the Benishai. On the third chapter, we go like three verses of each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Aniya Gever, Otina Hag, Ach, Bana, Bimahashava, Bila, Gimal, Dalet, He, Vav, Zain, Het, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem. Thank you. Nun, I'm scanning through the Pesukim. Samech. Now, what letter comes after the Samech? Ain. And yet we see that from the Samech we go to the Pe, 
And then we go to the Ain. Why? It says the Ben Ishai, because they open up their big mouth. <laughs> Some people do it, often. They open up their mouth against the Hachamim. Pe Ain. The mouth against the Ain, against the Hachamim. That's why, if you look right in the beginning of Megillat Echa, right in the beginning, the Pasuk writes, Aini, Aini, your Damaim. Aini, Aini, Pasuk 16, in the first chapter, let me find it right here. Al Elle Ani Bochia. God says, Upon this I cry. Aini, Aini, my eye, my eye. Shed tears. Who are the eyes? The Hachamim. God says, I'm able to deal with everything. But once you ignore and mistreat and threaten the Hachamim, I broke. This is God talking. Now, I'm not saying that people disrespect me. God forbid. Has Shalom. People, thank God, are very respectful. And I believe that, and I hope, that this is like this everywhere in the world. But I will tell you that it is not. Because many times, you hear people making comments, making comments about the Hachamim, calling them with different titles, or different names, or different labels. And based on what we are learning now, it seems that uh, this is an area, obviously with Teshuvah and Ma'asim Tovim, and you may ask, why does the Benish Hai makes so much emphasis on this topic? I believe that the Benish Hai lived in a time where Judaism started to become compromised, even in Iraq. Forget about Europe. Europe began the previous century in the early 1800s with new waves and new movements that, uh, thank God, are almost gone today. Reform and conservative movements are dying out because assimilation became so magnified in their ways that the leaders of the reform movement, they had a summit not long ago, and they said that they want to ask some Lubavitcher rabbis what is the formula that they do to attract so many people to do Teshuvah. And they want to attract members. And I think one of them approached one of the local rabbis, and it says, not a problem. We put the filin. We teach people Torah. We teach them to eat kasher. The more the fellow was listening, said, forget about it. It goes against our principles. So they decided to put on tefillin on Shabbat. <laughs> That's a different shiur. And obviously, the idea is not to talk in a negative way. Why did they decide to Shabbat? Because they are reformed. What's the meaning of reform? They want to reform whatever is here. But this Torah is not negotiable. We have it all the way from Moshe Rabbeinu. And this is what follows us generation after generation. Shema beni musar avi chabeal titosh Torah timecha. This is father to son, father to son, father to son, grandparents to grandchildren. It's a link. We are another link of the chain that began from Abraham Avinu. And you know what's our goal? Our goal is not to extend the chain three links. Extend the chain two links. Your child and your grandchild. You did that, the next generation will do two more. But if God forbid, we don't do nothing about it. Nobody guarantees you even to have a link. Doesn't mean, let's clarify, when I say a child, I don't mean biological children. Because many people have biological children. But it means, literally, that they are connected. 
Because if they are not connected, who are they connecting to? To the outside world? That goes against the basic principles of Torah. That's one of the messages of the Benish Hai as well. We can go on, but I think that for today, we'll say Dayeno, Beli Nether, tomorrow will do the final part because the Benish Hai connects Tishave Av with Hallel. Stay tuned tomorrow. Beli Nether will discuss it in the first half of the class, and then we'll wrap up a couple of ideas about Tisha Ve'av, Shenizkei Benechamat Zion, Be'ezat Hashem, we should have the Zakhut of the Geulah Shelema, Bimera Ve'yameinu, Amen. Baruch Adonai Le'aholeam, Amen Be'amen, Rebi Hanania, Ben Akashia Omer, Ratsa Kadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakot Et Yisrael, Nefi Chachir Bala, Entora Mizvot Shene'emar, Adonai Hafez, Lema'an,